Hi guys, welcome to Money Control. I'm Karunia Rao. With me is Manisha Gupta, and today the spotlight will be on key raw material prices, which have corrected a fair bit. Whether it's palm oil, whether it's cotton, or you know even rubber prices for that matter. So tell us one by one what's happening in each of these commodities. Let's start with palm because that has been making headlines as well. After we saw what Indonesia did. So today when you talk about the prices, it's four percent on the higher side, but clearly only because we've seen such a sell-off in many of these commodities. So some bit of a gain is something that you can't rule out. Out on on some days, so on a monthly basis, palm is still 17% on the lower side, and the prices are expected to see some more pressure because Indonesia now has cut export duty uh, to nil until the 31st of August because they have excess uh, palm oil. Supply, yeah. Yes, and Malaysia is looking at higher supplies for the month of July, up by nearly 21% on a month-on-month -month basis. So, well, yes, 4% uh, up today, but there is no reason really that you will see a huge surge up coming in for palm oil at all in this uh, year itself. We've Seen a high of 7,000. We've seen a low of 3,800 as well. With markets telling you, yes, there there is still more space to go on the lower side. But you know, nothing goes down in one line. So you will see these kind of aberrations when you will see prices go. And you know, up until a couple of months back, when uh, when the conflict was at its peak, it, I mean, you never know that the peak might still be ahead of us. Yeah. But when the conflict was fresh, uh, you know, uh, Indonesia had curbed its exports. Malaysian supplies were not as, as good. So clearly. Uh, You know, we're seeing all of that reflect on the stock prices as well for all of these FNCG players who mm. consume all these raw materials in in huge hordes are now seeing a fantastic rally, and even the commentary is now turning slightly more encouraging and more optimistic. We've seen HUL numbers as well coming by just a couple of days back, but let's talk. Uh, just yesterday, actually, <laughs> uh, let's talk about what's happening in other uh, commodities as well. Rice, what's happening there? You know, uh, while we have seen measures come in from the Indian government for all agriculture commodities, but not rice. This is one area where they have been telling us that rice is in a comfortable space. There is enough and more buffer stock, and 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 this giving of food grains to 80 crore families that they have been doing for uh, for a year and more now gets over on 30th of September, mm. and there are very less chances that you will see an extension of that because there is as much that the government has right now. Wheat they don't have a huge buffer stock. Rice uh, we are looking at sowing 17 percent lower than previous year. Most of the times, you know, when it comes to rice, the sowing uh, for this season starts mm -hmm. in mid-June and gets over by mid-July. But we are still 17% less than last year, so the expectation is that you might see yet another couple of weeks of the sowing continue here. The monsoon was a bit delayed as well, and that would be supportive. But for rice, there are more fundamentals which are on the stronger side right now. U.S., Europe. Italy, Spain, uh, all of these countries are looking at lower production. Pakistan also is a major producer, looking at a lower production. For India as well, we are the highest exporter of rice, but with sowing numbers slightly on the weaker side, that perhaps is what is fueling the prices in the international markets. So four and a half percent of gains in the last one week. But rice is something that you should keep an eye on. It's a uh, it's a staple diet for many countries across the globe. And while the rice prices did not gain as much as mm. other agricultural commodities did, but now it seems to have started moving as well. The next two raw materials are uh, non-consumables. They're cotton and uh, non-edible. <laughs> non-edible. Uh, cotton as well as natural rubber. What is happening? Uh, is rubber still ailing because of the China scenario? It surely is. Yes, we're trading at near one-year lows right now in case of rubber, and rubber has not been able to come back. It has seen constant declines into the market. The Japanese yen is trading at a 27-year mm. lows versus the US dollar. That is one of the factors as well. Uh, the automobile number, while it has been picking, but the base has been so low. 2020 was a bad year. 21, it started getting back. So we still are looking at lower numbers. Replacement rubber is doing well. But the new tire, new rubber is, is mm. still not. Uh, the demand is not so strong there. And when you look at the supply, that seems kind of okay because Kerala has seen such good rains. We will we will be soon into a tapping season here, so the rubber production also is expected to be Could strong. Could there be excess then? No, it, okay. it, it doesn't Apt. look like that. But it it you, right now it's more about the demand destruction kind of mm. affairs. And with Chinese demand on the weaker side, Chinese GDP numbers coming weak, and uh, this quarter in any case does look weak. So many people yet under uh, the, those COVID measures, restrictions, etc. I think rubber is still. Going to be under pressure, and finally cotton. Uh, even that has, uh, you know, uh, finally started reverse, seeing some reversal in trend. Uh, what is the trigger there? 
from the highs cotton is still 40% weaker and uh, while we are looking at some consolidation at these current levels but the cotton sowing in india seems positive uh, the chinese will come back with the cotton demand estimates which is expected to be on the higher side and okay. that could be supportive at that point in time but so many of these commodities have totally been you know uh, run to the ground the speculative positions have been unwinded the volumes have continued to decline in many of the global exchanges because people did not want to be a part of this because there was a sell off happening everywhere yeah. but now yes there is some sanity coming back into the markets equity markets are stabilizing as well the dollar decline is the major reason that you are seeing some buying coming here but for many of these commodities you will still have to wait until you see buying coming in especially for cotton and rubber as well so what is in it for traders to sort of take away when when these are the kind of trends playing out in key raw materials and commodities uh, time to just wait and watch or should they participate as well I think cotton is an area textile is an area that you will see come back come in much better for cars uh, replacement tire will continue to do well uh, you know i was reading a report karunia which says that millions of second hand cars are coming into mm. mumbai because of the kind of demand that we are seeing here yeah. so new cars maybe not but replacement yeah, tire demand will be there. will be coming back so yes rubber uh, is not expected to continue to languish around these one year lows we are expecting some bit of a bounce back coming in for many of these so if you are looking to invest these are good uh, levels to start perhaps nibbling into All right on that note guys thank you for tuning in we're wrapping it up see you once again tomorrow with a fresh update on commodities